Hello, we are going to talk about position, speed, and velocity. Let's get started. Position. Position is the location of a particle. We're looking at a very small particle um, to respect of a reference frame. When we talk about a reference frame, we're talking about a uh, uh, someone being in a certain situation, I guess. The, that's the easiest way to say it. Here's an example. If I'm in a train and someone is standing at the road, so I'm I'm in a I'm in a place that is literally moving while the other person is standing on the on the street, then we are at different different reference frame because every second I am going somewhere, and I'm uh, to me to me I I feel like I'm still, but to someone outside of my reference frame, so someone standing on the street. They're, they're saying, wow, this guy's going fast. So it's it's different reference frame. I feel like I'm I'm not moving at all, all because I'm in the train. I'm in the move, moving place, but the person outside of my reference frame and a still reference frame would think that I'm going pretty fast. Pretty fast. In return, someone who's outside the Earth would think that we're traveling really fast because the Earth is rotating where we think that we're not moving at all. We are, we, are, we are always rotating, we just don't know it. We do know it, I just told you. Not including time, there are three dimensions which would include a z-axis coming straight out of the paper, if you look, in, if you look at an x and y axis. That is completely true, I totally agree. Uh, that just means the not including time thing means uh, time is actually, is actually um, uh, considered a dimension. So sometimes people say we live in a four-dimensional world. Uh, that's because as as we uh, are in a in a place, that's also time. Like we can be at a place at a certain time, but that that same situation cannot happen twice. Anyways, that's not that important. Uh, just pretty much we're talking about position. Position is just a point on a x and y axis or on the x, y, and z axis. Maybe talk about particles. Here's some examples. Don't write this down as this thing suggests. If you're writing this down, then you must be incredibly bored. <coughs> displacement. Uh, when we talk about displacement, we're looking at a linear, um, linear distance, a linear path. If you are at one place and the next place, then the displacement would be the shortest uh, path one would take to go get from the initial point to the final point. And to calculate the displacement, the shortest path from um, point A to point B, you just do the final point minus the initial point. Now, we could have done the uh, Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula some people call and do like the square root of x final minus x initial squared plus uh, y final minus y initial squared and stuff like that but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this example really quick just cutting it into components of x's and y's that's why I wrote them separately like this so whoa that is not where I want to be where is it there we go New, no. So we have these two points, and I totally forgot what they are. So I'm gonna go back. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. I'm getting better at writing this. I'm telling you. Alrighty, delta x, the change in the x coordinate, which is represented by these two numbers, is the final minus the initial. How do I know that four is the final and two is the initial? Let me tell you. Over here in wording, we're saying that the particle moved from this initial point to this final point. So this is the initial point, that's the final point. And then for the y-axis, same thing pretty much. You can pause it and figure it out yourself, but you would have probably gotten 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Now I did not attach any units here, so you don't need any units here. Alrighty, let's move on. Distance is a little different from displacement in the sense that it is not necessarily a linear path. It is as if you're going to school 
and you do not have a straight way, sometimes you have to go around something to get to school. So the distance is the, is the length of uh, what someone has to travel to get there. So for instance, if I'm talking about, and I don't, don't I want this to be new, <clears throat> if I'm talking about this point and this point, right? The distance is however long this path is that I've gone. So if I, if I attach one of those uh, step counters on me while I was going this way, it would be a much larger value than if I was going, if I wanted to calculate the displacement. The displacement is always going to be the lowest value possible to go from one point to the next point. So in this example, it is what is the distance traveled by a particle going in circles of radius to eight times, and it stops where it starts. So if you have the circle radius two, and we try and figure out how how much it distances. Well, we we started here, we end here after we've done eight cycles. So we have gone eight times the circumference. The circumference represents the distance, some the distance of the outside of a circle. So if I was to cut the circle uh, right here and uh, put it straight, it would be that distance would be the circumference. Anyways, the the equation for circumference is two pi r. Since I want eight times that, it is eight times two pi r. R is two, so it would be eight times. 4 pi, because 2 times 2 is 4, and then you get 32 pi. Alrighty, and that would be the distance. The displacement is quite different. The displacement would be 0, and the reason is, if you are started here and you end here, then the linear distance from here to here is 0 because you ended up where you started, if that makes sense. Any hoodle, let's continue. If you are in my class, you are writing this stuff down in Cornell Notes. If you have any questions, please write those down so I can answer them after you have asked your peer, because that is how it goes in my class. Displacement over distance, these are some really nice facts to write down. Uh, distance has to be either bigger or possibly could be equal to displacement. It is very difficult to get the uh, displacement to equal the distance because that would imply that you're starting right here and you're going perfectly in line to get to point B. Because if, if somewhere along here you accidentally like walked around a uh, stone or something, or you tripped, or you just fall out of this path, you have already gone, f you have already set yourself up to go further than whatever the displacement is. So the distance is has it is a greater distance than the displacement, but in a perfect situation going in a straight line, it would be equal to the displacement. Uh, distance is a scalar number, meaning it is either positive or zero. Some people argue that zero is a positive number. Uh, I believe that zero is a neutral number. It, it's not positive or negative. Uh, you can I, I guess you can argue both. I don't know how you would argue that anyways. And then when you talk about displacement, it could be negative. It is a vector quantity. What that means for you right now is just it could be negative. Negative is kind of like a, a direction giver, meaning that if something has if something is, is going negative, it's going to the left if you're thinking x, y axis. So there is, there is a negative. If you can either have a negative or positive, that already tells you that you're dealing with a vector because you could go either right or left. We got to talk about vectors more. Vector is uh, just like a scalar, but it also has uh, direction. Again, none, none, of, none of the stuff that I'm saying you have to write down. It's just good to hear, I guess. The average velocity is kind of like the slope of a distance versus time velocity graph. And uh, I'm going to draw that stuff for you right now. But to calculate the average, by the way, every time you have a line above a variable, that implies average or mean or whatever you call it. 
the, the, the way you would get that is by having the difference in position uh, so pretty much a displacement divided by um, the change in time how long did it take you to get there so in this example we have a point at three seconds another point at seven seconds and what that pretty much means is that there could have been a situation where time has been started too early and you were only interested between this instance and that instance so delta t will you would have to calculate delta t because it took you four seconds to go from three to seven seconds anyways you'll see right now uh, i need to write this stuff down <coughs> File, new. By the way, this PowerPoint is all mine. I made it myself when I was younger. So, just so you know, uh, Mr. S is keeping it real. One meter, five meters. Am I correct? Yes, I am. And that's occurring at t equals three. I'm not going to write that down. And then the other position, the final position, is three meters and two meters. Why do I know that's the final position? Well, if this thing happened at two seconds, three seconds, and that thing happened at seven seconds, obviously this is the final position because it happened later. Anyways, uh, velocity in the x direction is change in x, so um, we 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 landed at three, started at one, so three minus one meters, uh, kind of like factoring out the m for meters, and then divided by the change in time. Now the change in time is seven because it's the final time minus three seconds so seven minus three and then that's in seconds as well and then we do the subtraction we get two over four and then we also have meters over seconds now check this out the units for velocity is meters per seconds if we were doing SI units it could be feet per hour but uh, SI units is meters per second so you could also write 0.5 meters per second. To find velocity in the y direction, it's the same thing. It would be, uh, I think that was the initial, right? Yeah. 2 minus 5, which is negative 3, divided by change in time, which we established as 4 seconds. And look at that. Look at that. Negative 3 over 4. Oh, wait. Did I put an S there? That's an M for meters negative 304 meters per second which is like negative 0 0.75 meters per second whoop de doo alrighty so we found the two velocities in the x and y direction and their average values every time you do displacement over change in time that is the average velocity it is not the instantaneous velocity which would represent the uh, uh, velocity that is currently happening now we're going to talk about the graph and actually I do not really want to do this situation because it's going to take me forever to do. Uh, usually a graph will have a displacement over a time. I try to go above and beyond which has a y and the x uh, axis with a t axis going across and then you would have to actually um, you would actually have to find this distance, that distance, this distance and this distance find the total distance you traveled divided by the total time you've gone which is seven seconds and I kind of did it here and um, I pretty much uh, had to calculate that guy so Pythagorean theorem um, or oh, this is a 45 45 triangle too so this is like 2 square root of 2 because one leg is 2 to get this one is 2 times square root of 2 again do not write this down this is a very way to uh, I, I guess I felt cool when I made this. I was like, look what I can do. I don't know. I was in college too, so don't feel bad. Uh, this is 2. It happened in 2 seconds. And then this is um, Pythagorean Theorem again. And then over here there. We do not care about this part because our cutoff point is right here. And over here our cutoff point is right there. Uh, this is 1. 2 squared root 2. That's 1. And then um, you can add those together. That's the distance you've traveled and you um, divide that stuff by four seconds and you have your average speed now if I would have done the average velocity how would that have been different ask yourself that anyways um, again you weren't supposed to write that down now um, 
what is the difference between velocity and speed? Now, my students are probably going to get really mad at me for saying this, but it would benefit you if you wrote the examples, but I do not require it. Just so you see it. But the only thing I really want you to write down is velocity and speed are very similar, except for the fact that velocity has direction and speed does not. For instance, you would never say this guy has a uh, speed of negative 5 meters per second because speed can only be a positive value. Here's some examples of velocity. Suspect is driving some, I came up with these by myself by the way, is driving this the, that fast on that direction that is velocity. And then uh, the velocity could be a negative value, the negative, come on stop that. Uh, the negative indicates that the particle is moving to the left, we already talked about that. Oh, and then speed is like a speedometer because it can never go uh, backwards. And then the speed radar. Speed radars never go negative. They just tell you how fast something is going. Anywho, so that is it. Here's some extra homework, which you do not work on right now. This is going to be some, these, these problems, I will work on these in the next video. And also this one as well. You will have to write them down in the next video, but for right now you do not have to. Uh, my students get a stamp for the notes. Do, you do not have to do this in order to get a stamp. You will later on. I, I will make, I, I'm pretty, probably going to make a video right now to do these problems. Anyways, that is it. Hopefully this was less than 15 minutes. I tried so hard. I really did. You guys have a fantastic day. And um, as the young people say, peace. No, I take that back. Bye.